The Lord Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16 to his disciples, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. I'd like to tell a little story about Welcome Detweiler. He used to amusingly say that the way he got his name was that he decided very early on in life to be polite. And shortly after he was born, he said to the doctor that had delivered him, thank you, doctor. And the doctor said, you're welcome. Well, I'm sure that wasn't the reason, but uh, welcome to Weiler was born March 20, 1908 in Bucks County in Pennsylvania to a Mennonite family. And there he farmed with his family and he became deeply concerned about the need of the lost around him, began to preach every opportunity he had when he didn't need to farm, he was found out preaching. And a wonderful work of God in North Carolina. The Detweilers moved in 1945 to Durham. Earlier on, he had been invited to be the song leader and to be involved in some gospel meetings in the Piedmont district of North Carolina. And he continued to serve the Lord there until 1992 when the Lord took him home. When I was spending some time down in the South on one occasion, I was out for lunch with Brother Detweiler. At that time, he was well into his 80s. And we were sitting in the restaurant having a conversation when the waitress came up. And Mr. Detweiler looked very kindly on this young woman and said to her, when you have a minute, I have a question. Now that's a beautiful approach to take because you're asking this person to come when they have time. Obviously, if you begin to talk to someone and they haven't given you that opportunity, they can say, look, I'm busy, I can't talk. But he specifically asked her uh, when she had a minute that he had a question. And of course, at the same time, he was stirring up her curiosity. Eventually, she came over and said, okay, I've got a few minutes, what, what's your question? And I'll never forget, he looked very kindly upon her and he said, I'm an old man and I'm going to die soon. And I wonder, could you tell me what is the way to heaven? And she said, well, you look like a lovely gentleman. I'm sure you'll be just fine. And he feigned horror. And he said, oh, what, what a terrible thing you've done. What a terrible thing you've done. And she was quite shocked and she said, what, what did I do? Well, he said, I asked you how to get to heaven and you told me how to go straight to hell. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not sure everyone can use that tactic, but he got away with it, first of all, because he was an old man. But I tell you, that young woman would never forget that experience. What do you have to do to go to hell? Just go on living the way you're living. That's the sad tragedy. And what do you have to do to go to heaven? Transfer your trust from whatever you're trusting now and transfer it to the Lord Jesus and his finished work at Calvary. So the Lord Jesus said, if you're going to be effective in this world, you're going to have to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Now a serpent doesn't move in a straight line. They sometimes call them sidewinders for a reason. And so if we're going to be effective, we can't always go straight at something. And here was a classic illustration. When you have a minute, I have a question. And by doing that, he was offering her the opportunity to come and hear the question, and he was counting on her to be curious enough to ask it. So may the Lord help us to learn to be wise and to be effective as we are surrounded by antagonistic forces, but to be forthright. There are some of us use so much tact we never make contact. We have to get to the point, and he certainly did that day. And I still pray for that young lady, wherever she is. 
she may have thought seriously as he shared with her the gospel of how to get to heaven, that it isn't just by being a good person, but by trusting alone in the finished work of Christ. Thank you.